Hey guys, welcome to video 36. Today we're going to start discussing different amplifier classifications. Amplifiers are classified by where the Q point is located for the transistor or transistors in the circuit. Uh, we're going to be examining class A amplifier power and efficiency today and although I haven't stated explicitly all the amplifiers we've been looking at so far have been class A amplifiers. All right, a class A amplifier uh, typically has its Q point located at or near the center of the load line. All right, and before we go on, let's just uh, review a couple of basic relationships. Uh, power is equal to voltage times current, or V squared over R, or I squared R. These are all equivalent uh, expressions for power. If I use a lowercase italic letter, that indicates the instantaneous value of power voltage or current. The uppercase italic would represent the peak RMS or average value of a quantity. All right, so with that out of the way, let's look at this transistor here in the middle of the page. And assuming it's biased up for class A operation, its Q point is near the middle of the load line. And at the Q point, we've got a PDQ, power dissipation at the Q point, equal to ICQ times VCE. Q. All right. Now, one of the interesting characteristics of a class A amplifier is that the transistor dissipates the most power under no signal conditions. Okay. Whenever we have no signal coming in, the transistor is just sitting here dissipating PDQ constantly. When we apply a signal, we start moving the Q point back and forth on the load line. And if we move it to its extremes, say saturation, we get PD in saturation equal to IC sat times zero volts, so we dissipate no power in saturation. Similarly, in cutoff, our PD cutoff is equal to VCE cutoff times zero current, so we have zero dissipation there as well. All right, and the more time the Q point spends away from the center of the load line, the lower the average power dissipation of the transistor. Okay, now that's way different than most amplifiers that you're probably going to be uh, used to seeing, say your car audio amplifier or your home stereo amplifier. Generally, the louder you turn them up, the hotter the output transistors get. Okay, so that's a good indication that those are not class A power amplifiers. For this transistor, the louder we turn up the amplifier, the cooler the transistor gets. So that's an interesting thing about class A amplifiers. All right, now let's take a look at a little more specific example. Here we've got a transistor biased up for ICQ of 5 milliamps and VCEQ of 5 volts. At the Q point, PDQ is equal to 5 mils times 5 volts or 25 milliwatts. With no signal, it sits there dissipating 25 milliwatts. Now, when we apply a signal to the base that causes the transistor to use its entire AC load line, the Q point, of course, moves all the way to saturation, and at that limit, we dissipate 0 milliwatts. And at cutoff, we dissipate 0 milliwatts. And at the intermediate points when the Q point is moving, say uh, halfway to saturation, we're dissipating 7.5 mils times 2.5 volts, or 12.5 milliwatts. Likewise, at halfway between the Q point and cutoff, we're also going to have the transistor dissipating 12.5 milliwatts. Okay, now if we were to graph the power dissipation of the transistor as our Q point moves in response to a sinusoidal input, this is the waveform that we would get. All right, we see that uh, at the Q point we're dissipating 25 milliwatts as the Q point moves towards saturation. The power dissipation moves towards zero. Then as we go back to the Q point, we reach maximum power dissipation. Then we move towards cutoff where we get minimum, maximum, minimum, and so on. So we see that the power dissipation of the transistor varies sinusoidally between PDQ and zero, and the average dissipation under maximum output conditions is one half of the PDQ value, or in this case, 12.5 milliwatts. When a transistor is doing nothing, it dissipates 25 milliwatts. When it's 
producing maximum output, it dissipates 12 and a half milliwatts. Okay, now let's take a look at an actual circuit here, okay? Here I've designed an amplifier that uh, gives us a Q point of five milliamps and five volts, just like the previous transistor. And I've set it up so that uh, our AC load line has a Q point exactly in its center. Okay, now here are all the values for the analysis. Uh, what I want you guys to do is just uh, analyze this circuit and verify my numbers here, okay? And I've also included the current that's flowing down through the biasing resistors, okay? I sub bias, it's about 1.2 milliamps for this circuit. That's going to uh, factor into our efficiency analysis. All right, so for this amplifier, we've got VO max of five volts. That is, we can swing until uh, we reach 10 volts on our AC load line, and we can swing from VCEQ down to zero. So we've got a max of five volts, a min of negative five, and PDQ is five mils times five volts or 25 milliwatts. Our average transistor dissipation at maximum output is 12.5 milliwatts. All right, now I want to take a look at the AC equivalent circuit here for one second, okay? So let's go on over, and here's our AC equivalent circuit. And if we look at the output voltage, we know that the maximum output power is going to be VO max squared divided by RL. All right, notice that V out also appears across RC, and that's going to cause power dissipation here, and that contributes to the inefficiency of the amplifier. Okay, the actual useful output power is uh, dissipated by RL, and this is our equation for the maximum output power. Now, for a sinusoidal power waveform, the RMS value is simply the max value divided by 2. All right, and the reason for that uh, we can show is uh, power RMS is equal to VRMS times IRMS. And we know that RMS voltage is VP times 0.707, or equivalently VP over the square root of 2. And likewise, the RMS current is the peak current divided by the square root of 2. So when we multiply these out, we have VP times IP, that's the peak power, divided by the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is 2. So the RMS power is equal to peak power divided by two, as we have here. All right, now the total power delivered to the amplifier circuit by the power supply, we're gonna denote as P sub CC, and that's equal to VCC times ICQ plus the biasing current. If I sub bias is small enough to ignore, then we can use this approximation. Uh, for our example, we're gonna use the more accurate equation here. All right, and finally, the efficiency of the amplifier is the output power delivered to the load in RMS divided by the total power absorbed from the power supply, P sub CC, times 100%. All right, now let's take a look at our output power as a function of output voltage, okay? Here we see if we're driving the amplifier to maximum output voltage, we're varying from VO max to VO min. And if we make a correlation between these waveforms, with zero volts out, we have zero power dissipation in the load. As V out goes to the maximum, we get maximum power out. Then as V out goes back to zero, we get zero power out. When V out goes negative, we still get a positive power out, reaching a maximum when we hit our most negative V out value, and so on. So we see that our output power waveform varies from PO max to zero, and the RMS value is exactly in the middle, PO max divided by two. All right, now we could show this mathematically uh, more rigorously by using this trigonometric identity. Now I have here uh, the trigonometric identity expressed only in terms of voltage, but we can see in general, when you take a sine wave and square it, you get out a negative cosine with twice the frequency, and a DC offset in the positive direction. So that's what we've got here. We've got a negative cosine with twice the frequency of the input, and it's shifted up by one half of the maximum power, and that's the RMS value. Okay, so uh, let's put all of this stuff to use on our amplifier here, and let's find our maximum power out 
PO max, which equals VO max squared divided by RL. So that's uh, VO max is 5 squared is 25 divided by 2700 and let's pull up our calculator so we've got 25 divided by 2700 whoops that's 2700 so we've got a maximum power output to our load of about 9.25 9.26 milliwatts okay 9.25 milliwatts our rms value is one half of that so p out rms is let's divide that by two and we've got about 4.63 milliwatts rms 4.63 milliwatts rms okay a little bit crowded here but those are our uh, RMS power to this load. This is not a power amplifier. It's a small signal amplifier, so we're not going to get that much out of it. But let's go down here on the next page and calculate our efficiency. All right, so here's what we've got so far. Our PDQ is 25 milliwatts. At maximum unclipped output, the transistor dissipates 12 and a half milliwatts. Our PO max is V out max squared over RL 25 over 2700 is about 9.26 milliwatts peak 4.63 milliwatts RMS now our total DC power supply uh, power delivered to this amplifier is 15 volts times 5 milliamps ICQ plus 1.2 milliamps through our bias or 93 milliwatts so the efficiency of this amplifier is the maximum RMS output, 4.63 milliwatts, divided by our total absorbed from the power supply, 93 milliwatts, and that works out to be 5%. So this amplifier is 5% efficient. All right, now the maximum possible theoretical efficiency for a Class A amplifier is 25%. So we're nowhere near the maximum theoretical uh, efficiency we could get from this. All right. Usually 5%, maybe 10% is the most you're going to get from a circuit like this. Okay. How do we get 25% or get close to it? Well, what we have to do is either you know, a combination of these things, reduce our bias current to zero, and that's not possible, it's not feasible to do that. Uh, we can reduce our collector current AC that flows through our collector resistor, and that's not really possible unless we put our load right in the collector, okay? And we'd also need identical DC and AC load lines with a centered Q point. All of this adds up to the fact that with this amplifier, uh, using the techniques we've covered so far, we're not going to get anywhere near 25% efficiency, okay? Now, there are other uh, coupling arrangements that we can use. For example, there's transformer coupling. That's not used very often with transistors, but it is used a lot with vacuum tube amplifiers. And if we were to use transformer coupling, we could get a maximum theoretical efficiency of 50%, okay? But again, that's a topic for another day. So let me leave you guys with a problem to do. All right, it's your turn. Here I've got an amplifier similar to what we've used before. And I want you guys to do the complete DC AC analysis and find the maximum power out, the power absorbed from the power supplies and the efficiency of this amplifier, okay? This shouldn't be too bad. Um, just, you know, do the best you can, and we'll probably go over this amplifier again sometime in the future. But for now, that's all I've got for you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.